Hello and welcome back to CycleFab. I'm Larry. I have a great opportunity for all of you out there. This right here used to be my bike. I just sold it. It's a 2014 Suzuki DL1000. Um, it's an adventure bike, dual sport. And anyway, I made these crash bars for it several years back and then went all over the country trailering it mostly just to see the U.S. and, you know, take in the sights. Well, in the process of doing that, these crash bars have gotten dinged up. I haven't wrecked the bike or anything. It's just I had tie down straps on it and you know being hauled in the trailer along with other things. Uh, some of the paint's gotten knocked off. Now the reason why they're painted and not powder coated is because at the time I was not powder coating. I did not have an oven large enough for something like this. Well now I do. So I made a deal with the guy who bought this from me that I want to go ahead and powder coat these crash guards on here and then present the bike to him. Now, he has no idea what this is going to look like. Yes, he does know I'm going to powder coat them and he knows what color I'm gonna powder coat them in. It's going to be an aluminum by Prismatic Powders. Then I'm gonna go back over it with a satin clear coat and it should really pop up against this blue. Anyway, this is a real world scenario of some of the type of jobs that I get in here and I just want to share it with you and I want to go through the full process of me prepping these and getting them ready for powder coating. Metal preparation is probably the most important part of powder coating. Matter of fact, it is the most important part and also the most time consuming. So let's get on with this and uh, we'll get these things out and present them with a really good product. Oh yeah, also I'll be powder coating the luggage carriers in the back. Just want to keep you guys up to speed on this. So instead of being black, they'll also be uh, aluminum. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rip these off. I uh, got the crash bars off already. And then I'll show you how I strip the paint off. Okay guys, I've got the guards taken off the bike and also got the luggage adapter taken off the bike. And these are painted. So what I'm gonna do is just basically strip the paint off. The reason why I'm doing that is because I do not need all this garbage in my sandblasting cabinet. This will sandblast off, but uh, I just try to keep my sand as clean as possible. So the first thing you want to do, especially if it has mud on it, dirt, debris, whatever, wash it off with soapy water. Now this does not, th this is fine. So I'm going to go immediately right into the paint stripper. And now this stuff right here is a non-methylene chloride based paint stripper. All right, get a good picture of it. I'll give you a screenshot of it. Anyway, this stuff is the only thing that I've, or the best thing I've found off the shelf to remove not only paint, but also powder coating. Now, it does not work as well as the methylene chloride, but it does work. So uh, anyway, if you're looking for something to get old powder coat off, uh, this is what I use and I use it quite readily. Anyway, uh, so since these do not have any dirt on, I'm not gonna be scrubbing them off with soap and water. I'm just gonna go directly to this stuff and the way you apply it, obviously, you know, safety, protection, eyes, gloves. Uh, if this gets in your eyes, you will possibly go blind. And if you get it on your skin, it does burn. So just pour some up in a little container and just paint it on. And I mean, paint comes off relatively quick, like 20 minutes maybe. And after that, uh, just take a wire brush, scrape it off, get as much of it off as you can. Like I said, this is going into a sandblasting machine. So if I do leave a little bit on there, it's no big whoop for me. Uh, for those guys out there that you know, do not have a sandblasting machine, then you know, a little bit more elbow grease will be involved in getting all this off. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, I'm not gonna do a fast forward through this stuff actually working on this. It's just, it's, it's a waste of time. It's what I consider fluff in a video. So basically I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on, take care of this part. Then the next thing you'll see be after I get it all stripped off and then going into the sandblasting machine. And as it proceeds along, that's what I'll be showing you guys. So anyway, I wanna get to work and uh, get this out for my customer. It, the best way to apply this stuff is literally with just a paintbrush um, and it, just slop it on there. I mean, it's fairly cheap. Like I said, I'll give you a screenshot on it. 
I get most of my stuff from Lowe's um, just because they're inexpensive and it's close by. Uh, you know, Home Depot has the same stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this on here. Now, like I said, this does not take very long at all. Uh, not with paint. But powder coat, yeah, yeah. It, it takes a little bit longer, but I was really surprised that it worked as well as it did compared to the methylene chloride based. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, this stuff is pretty potent. All right, I'll see you on a little bit. Okay, guys, uh, I got this all prepped, got all the paint off, and bead blasted. Now, this video is mainly about just basic metal prep, all right? If you coat these things, you know, the little stainless steel cups that you get at Walmart, you do not need to bead blast them, all right? All you need to do is get all those stickers off of them and, you know, wipe it down with acetone and powder coat it. That's it. Uh, that, that's all you need to do to those. So don't think that you have to have a sandblaster in order to powder coat. You do not at all. You just have to make sure that the metal is clean. Uh, this was kind of a pain. Uh, automotive paint is tougher than, say, like Krylon or Rust-Oleum. All right, so this took quite a bit of work. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have a methylene chloride uh, paint stripper anymore. Uh, I really could have used it. When I said that the paint stripper that we have nowadays, you know, will take off powder coat, it does. But the way that I use it is I do mostly like small parts, all right? And I just submerge them in it and let them sit overnight. Yeah, it'll take powder cut off that way, but just painting it on, no, it, it, it doesn't. Uh, not very well anyway. Okay, now everybody knows what acetone is. You can pick it up at Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. It's great to use for getting the grime, dust, and all, you know, hand oil off of your parts and everything right before you powder cut them, which is what I'm fixing to do now. Uh, I just want to kind of give you guys a close-up of these. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Parts of this, you can obviously see that it's been sandblasted. And other parts, I hit it with one of these, okay? Just a 3M disc scotch bright pad. And a little mini belt sander uh, to get down the nooks and crannies. But I really don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but anyway, you just need to get the metal clean, all right? Just get all the debris off of it. That's it. Uh, now, the next time you see these, uh, they will be on the bike, finished, and stick around. We're going to have an unveiling for the customer. Hey, guys, I just want to let you know that I did this entire powder coat job with a Harbor Freight powder coat gun. Now, I did have my mixing tube diffuser combo kit installed in it and how good of a job it actually did here. I mean, this thing is the difference between night and day with my kit installed in it. If you enjoyed this video, then please go ahead and hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel, and go ahead and hit that notification bell too so you know when my next video is coming out. Now the customer will be here in just a little bit, so let's go ahead and get on with the video. What the, hey. how I came up with this design is I looked at everybody else's. Sure. Okay and i took the best of all of them and put it together like this support bar right here most of them do not have this really it's just these no. two huh? um, just this main there may be another one that has it but then again it's it's low or whatever or it comes up here and then goes across so i put this in as extra support, support. yeah absolutely you slam it hard it, if you slam something that if you slam this bike that hard you're going to have other things to worry about. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All this is mild steel, but it's 11 gauge. 11 which gauge. Which is uh, eight inch thick Okay. Wall. Yeah, that's some good and stuff. That is uh, DOM, uh, drawn over mandrel tubing. It's not seamed tubing to where it's welded together with a sure. laser weld. It's actually forged I got you. that way. It's the strongest mechanical tubing that you can get in 1018. Thanks, Cycle Fab. Man, you did a great job. This is awesome. Sure. I really appreciate it. I'm definitely going to uh, talk to you about any future projects that I got going great, on. Great, man. So get involved. Love to have you. Thank you. All right. Well, <laughs> let's get this off the rack and load it onto your truck. Yeah, let's Think do it. Do some riding. Yeah, I think all it's right. actually, uh, looks like perfect riding weather all of a sudden. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah, it won't get too hot. Yeah, that's right. Whoa, looks like I have another satisfied customer here at Cycle Fab. Say, I want to say thanks for all you guys for tuning in and watching my channel. I really, really appreciate that. 
And I will be back in a couple of weeks with another great video. So I'll see you guys then. Bye now.